evening, my loves, and welcome back to Bedtime Stories with Mommy J. And we will continue with The Day My Butt Went Psycho, based on a true story by Andy Griffiths. And we are still on chapter one. So we're going to finish chapter one off today. So let's begin. And remember, we left off with the butt catcher and Zach talking to each other and figuring out who can save everybody. There's only one person who can stop it. Scylla Stern, said the butt catcher. Scylla Stern, said Zach. The butt catcher nodded. Zach knew about Scylla Stern. Everybody did, like all his friends at school. Zach collected butt fighter trading cards, and the card featuring Scylla Stern was the rarest and the most prized of them all. He was one of the world's greatest butt hunters. He hunted and captured some of the biggest and meanest butts on the planet. His his photograph on the card showed a fierce-looking man dressed in a shiny black ninja suit. Unlike a ninja, however, he was wearing a white hard hat with a miner's lamp on the front of it. Also, unlike a ninja, he had a couple of massive butt guns slung across his shoulders. Zack had had to trade 10 of his best butt fighter cards for it, including the cards featuring the smacker, the kicker, and the kisser. But he was so happy to get the Scylla Stern card. He didn't even mind. The butt catcher groaned. His eyes were closed. He was obviously in pain. Zack sprayed a little more air freshener above his head. The butt catcher opened his eyes and focused on him with difficulty. Zack, you have to go to the butt hunter. Tell him everything that's happened here tonight. He'll know what to do. But I can't go out there, said Zack. It's too dangerous. The whole town will be crawling with butts. Zack, said the butt catcher. It's your butt. It's your responsibility. You can't stick your head in the sand or it will end up grafted to your backside just like mine. He was right. Zack knew that, but he was still scared. Despite his enthusiasm for collecting butt fighter trading cards, he had no desire to be a butt fighter himself. Well, perhaps it wasn't too, so much a lack of desire as a lack of aptitude. Zack had failed the Junior Butt Fighters League entry exam three times. Each time, he'd been gassed by a particularly clumsy and slow-moving butt, much to the amusement of the other junior butt fighters and the embarrassment of his parents and himself. After the third gassing, he'd given up all thoughts of fighting butts and devoted himself to his trading card collection instead. The butt catcher, sensing Zack's fear, spoke to him gently. Look, Zack, he said, I'm not asking you to fight them. All you have to do is to contact the butt hunter. Here, I've got everything you need. My utility belt. Take it. The butt catcher undid the belt from around his waist and handed it to Zack. Zack took the belt. It was made of thick brown leather and had a large gold buckle with the words Be Bold, Be Brave, Be Free inscribed on the front. The belt had a variety of little hoisters and hooks to which all the basic tools of butt catching were attached. There were three wooden clothespins, a roll of toilet paper, a fluffy pink toilet seat cover, a small roll-up net, a roll of corks, a set of sewing needles, a box of matches, a tennis racket, and a cake of soap. Zach understood what most of the items were for, except the soap. What's the soap for, he asked. For washing your hands, said the butt catcher. It's the first rule of butt fighting. Always wash your hands afterwards. Got that? Zach nodded. The butt catcher lay back down, grimacing with pain. And one more thing, Zack, he murmured weakly. What's that, said Zack, his mind reeling. Put these socks on. The butt catcher handed him a pair of thick brown butt catcher socks. Socks, said Zack, wondering if the butt catcher had gone crazy. Yes, said the butt catcher. Put them on now, and don't take them off until you need them. How will I know when I need them, said Zack, so confused. You'll know, he said. You'll just know. Where will I find the butt hunter? asked Zack. The butt catcher didn't respond. He lost consciousness. Zack slapped his cheek. Wake up, he said. You haven't told me where I can find the butt hunter. For a moment, there was no response. Then the butt catcher half opened his eyes. He tried to form words. I need more spray, he whispered. Zack sprayed. The butt catcher started talking, although still with difficulty. You'll find him at the, uh, the, his voice trailed off. Zack passed the nozzle on the spray can, but nothing happened. He pressed it again, still nothing. Zack threw the can on the ground. 
Where? he pleaded. Just tell me where. But it was no use. The bug catcher was completely out of it. Zet looked at the belt in his hand and read the inscription on the buckle again. Be bold. Be brave. Be free. Zack didn't feel bold. He didn't feel brave. And he certainly didn't feel free. He wasn't free to live his life. Hmm. His butt was always wrecking everything. Whatever he tried to do, his butt would always find some way to sabotage it. Zack knew that the butt catcher was right. His butt was his responsibility. He had to find the butt hunter before he, it got any more out of control. Zack put the belt on. He hung loosely around his waist. He pulled it tight, but it still felt weird. It reminded him of a feeling he had when he put on the cowboy suit his parents had given him for his sixth birthday. It was too big, and the seams had made his skin itch. To make things worse, he pricked himself with a shiny silver sheriff badge and cried. He begged to be more able to take it off, much to his father's frustration. But you only just put it on, he said. Give him time, said his mother. He probably just needs to grow into it. But Zack had never worn it again. He just didn't like it. And he didn't like the belt. As far as Zack was concerned, the only difference between his cowboy suit and the butt catcher's belt was that instead of guns, he had a roll of toilet paper on one hip and a tennis racket on the other. Just as Zack was about to leave, he remembered the socks. Oh, great, he mumbled as he rolled them onto his feet. Not only do I have to find the butt hunter, get my crazy butt back and save the world, I have to wear butt catcher socks that will make my feet all hot and stinky. This day just keeps getting better and better. He pulled his shoes back on and headed towards the gate. And that was finally the end of chapter one, everyone. And you guys need to brush your teeth and you need to say your prayers. You need to keep believing and having faith that you will be home with me so you can be unconditionally loved because I love you so much. And I wish you all the sweet dreams tonight. Hugs and kisses. Mwah.